nugget, we're going to be talking about blood pressures, specifically blood pressures in preemie babies. Really, we're going to be talking about the mean blood pressures. The mean, like the name suggests, is the average blood pressure. Since we spend a lot more time in diastole than systole, generally the mean blood pressure is closer to the diastolic blood pressure than the systolic blood pressure. Studies on healthy term babies have shown that the mean blood pressure in the first few hours to the first few days of life of healthy term babies is somewhere between 50 and 60. In healthy term kids and older kids and adults, it's much easier to define hypo and hypertension because you can just collect data on healthy normals and then if the average blood pressure is two standard deviations less than the mean, then that person has hypotension. And if the blood pressure is two standard deviations above the mean, then that patient has hypertension. The problem with preterm babies is that they're not really normal. By definition, infants are not supposed to be born less than 40 weeks or less than 37 weeks, which is full term. So what should we consider normal for a 26 weeker? What if they need a little bit of oxygen or they need to be on the ventilator machine or they are not tolerating feeds? Could that still be considered a normal situation with a normal blood pressure? Because of that, we don't have great normal values for preemie babies, so we can't calculate two standard deviations less or more than the averages. We do know that the smaller the baby is, the lower the gestational age of the baby, and the younger the baby is, the lower the blood pressure is. So for example, if you have a 24-week infant that weighs 500 grams, their mean blood pressure is going to be lower than a 24-week infant that weighs 750 grams. Both of those infants are going to have lower blood pressure than a baby that was born at 28 weeks. Also realize that there are different ways to measure blood pressures. And the ones that we use most consistently is the cuff pressure. As you can imagine, it's very, very easy to have the wrong cuff size for a premature infant with their tiny limbs. Generally, the cuff pressures slightly overestimate the actual intraarterial pressures. So when we say intraarterial, we mean the monitoring by like a umbilical arterial catheter or a peripheral arterial line, so a PAL or a UAC. Even those lines, the waves can get dampened, especially if they're tiny arterial lines on like tiny little babies. There could be a clot in it. It might just not be picking up in that particular vessel. So we don't also have a great way of consistently measuring blood pressures in a lot of babies. Different values have been suggested for what we should accept as the lower limit of the mean arterial blood pressure in preemies. One of the values suggested was a mean arterial blood pressure should not go below 30. So even in 25 weeker, if your mean pressure is below 30, then that could be considered hypotensive. More recently, what people have kind of become accustomed to using is the gestational age of an infant. So if you are 23 weeker, then your blood pressure mean shouldn't go below 23. If you're 32 weeks, then your blood pressure mean shouldn't go below 32. So why should we even care if the number goes below those acceptable lower values? So the first reason is, is why do we have hypertension in the first place? Is it because the baby has sepsis, so there's vasodilation? Is the baby in adrenal shock with huge amounts of adrenal insufficiency? Is there cardiogenic shock where the heart is just failing, maybe from massive perinatal depression? Or is there just hypovolemia? Has the baby bled out or just seriously dehydrated? So the first reason why we care is, is there an etiology that's causing the baby to have low blood pressures? The second reason why we worry about hypertension is that if the blood pressure is low, then all the cells in the body might not be getting the blood and therefore the oxygen that they need. Obviously that can be very dangerous and they can end up in hypertensive shock. In a lot of cases, we don't have a cause for the hypertension. We just have a preemie infant and we notice that their blood pressures are lower than what we would expect them to be if we're using the gestational age parameter. So what do we do in those cases? We know that if blood pressures swing up and down, it can be very dangerous for a baby. Go watch the video on IVH. So we know that we don't want to make any massive quick adjustments for the baby. 
So a lot of the time, if the baby is not showing any signs of shock, so for example, we have good urinary output, which is indicative of good perfusion to the kidneys. If we have good pulses and perfusion in the extremities of the body, so they're nice and pink. If the baby's tolerating feeds and appears active and doesn't have any acidosis, then even if the blood pressure is on the lower side, all those signs and symptoms suggest that the baby is getting enough oxygen to the cells of its body. So in that case, even if, for example, it's a 26 weeker and the mean arterial pressure is 23, if the baby doesn't have any of those concerning signs and symptoms, we would probably just leave the baby and allow it to ride it out. However, in that same scenario, a 26 weeker with a mean arterial blood pressure of 23, if the perfusion is shot and you have like a four or five second capillary layer with refill, or the pulses are really weak, or the baby's just really lethargic, at that point we would be very concerned that the baby is not getting enough oxygen. So we would decide to correct it. That is another topic, talking about boluses and which presses to use. But at that point we would decide that the baby does have hypertension that needs to be treated. I hope you learned something. Please comment and like and let me know what else you'd like to learn about. Thank you.